Welcome to DockerCon 2020 Live. My name is Patrick Delulet. I am a senior product manager at Microfocus, driving our IT operations management platform and shared services. My session will cover how at Microfocus, within the past three years, we were able to scale Docker Hub from zero to 400 plus repositories while enabling a new delivery and deployment model of our containerized portfolio for our enterprise customers. Thanks for watching. This session will cover an advanced use case of Docker Hub and how we were able to leverage and scale this service to publish and distribute our premium software to our customers. We'll start with a quick introduction on Macrofocus. We are a global British-owned organization founded in the 70s with over 12,000 employees. The company grew through a set of M&As over time. I personally came with a merger of Macrofocus and Newlet Packard Enterprise Software. We are one of the top pure software companies with 40,000 plus enterprise customers worldwide. We have all the tools you need to build, operate, secure, and analyze the enterprise. And by design, those tools bridge the gap between existing and emerging technologies, which means that you can innovate faster with less risk in the race of digital transformation. Talking about digital transformation, we actually started our own journey about three years ago with key initiatives to modernize and simplify our IT software portfolio. We decided to transition our IT operations management portfolio by leveraging container technology while bringing a new sense of agility into our R&D organization, improving team velocity and software quality in the process. So we went all in with container technologies and embraced the cloud native ecosystem. We embarked into refactoring our software. And so indeed it is a journey. We uh, joined the CNCF foundation last year to get more visibility into the ecosystem. So what does it look like? What does it look like? Well, we moved from 40 plus legacy products to five key containerized suites, also known as applications in areas such as service management, cloud management, enterprise monitoring, data center, and network automation. Those are our core skills. We also offer different editions based on the use cases our customers would like to deploy. We ended up delivering a Kubernetes-based platform that I've been driving since the beginning, and it provides us with a solid infrastructure abstraction and a set of key shared services that were common to run our core portfolio. Services such as identity management for authentication and authorization, collaboration with chat ops, licensing, log, monitoring, orchestration, dashboarding, and analytics. By bringing the portfolio together under a common platform, it improved the overall reuse and sharing across the organization it put a stop to duplicated R&D efforts and increased the level of integrations between those suites. Now, when we started this project, we had few important goals in mind, especially for our first production release back in the summer of 2017. We certainly wanted to ship our platform bits, but also get a strong adoption from our portfolio applications. Another goal that was very important to me was how we could accelerate, well, really fast track, the delivery of our assets into our customer's environment. Something that could take days or week with our existing legacy processes and software distribution channels. And obviously this is not to be expected. This is not the expected user experience that you want to provide when dealing with cloud-ready or SaaS-based enterprise software nowadays. We had been building enterprise software for 30 years, and so there is definitely a rich knowledge in-house, but there are always opportunities to improve. And in this new context, we had the perfect mix of DevOps, container, and cloud enablement. We had found ourselves ready to address some of our customer pain points the right way. 
So how could I offer a simple Docker pool experience for our customers? How could we start an in-house DevOps practice to ensure that we're able to automate the publishing of our container images in a repeatable and consistent fashion every time we release or update our software? So we went looking for a Docker registry, uh, one that could meet a very tight deadline Deadline at the time, because we were about 30 days left before we, we go live, and knowing also our current skill set, which was also important. So we looked at a few options, such as Artifactory, Amazon ECR, uh, Portus from Suze, because Suze was part of MicroFocus at the time, and, uh, and finally Docker Hub. Now we needed to ensure this was SaaS friendly, but we also knew that we could not set up shop in the cloud right away. We did not have a strong DevOps culture at the time or a group that could quickly help us host and manage such service. Even our own IT organization was not able to meet our tight deadline at the time. So we looked at Amazon ECR, but we, uh, we found a couple hurdles. The first one was of, overall a lack of knowledge of EC2 uh, within our teams. Uh, we also found out that the EC2 security model was maybe a bit too complex to bring MicroFocus and our customers together in a very simple and efficient way. Also on the pricing front, we would have to pay not only for the amount of data stored in our repositories, but also for the data transferred. And so we're not able to gauge uh, the cost associated with our expected setup and downloads. We, we did a first analysis um, and it indicated that we would end up paying about 20 times the amount compared to a Docker Hub setup, for example. So we went back to Docker Hub. We uh, already had few public facing uh, images in the Docker store at the time. And so we knew um, we could use Docker uh, through the use of private repositories if we wanted to. Uh, the RBAC model uh, available to us was also simple enough so that we can move forward quickly. And the pricing also was uh, quite attractive as Docker was uh, charging only on the number of repositories per organization. So we knew we could start small and grow as we see fit. We also had to get some approvals from our usual stakeholders, something that a large organization such as MacroFocus has to deal with. So I spent a great deal of time and effort explaining the benefits of our new solution um, as we're about to roll out you know, the new containerized uh, portfolio. So we met with legal because obviously we were introducing the use of a third party service in our distribution channel. So something to look at a bit more carefully. We work with security to ensure we meet uh, their mandates when it comes to image signing, uh, credentials management for internal and external stakeholders as well. We also partner with release operations uh, people just to ensure that we have the right governance model that we are able to report back on uh, who's using those repositories at any time. And we also enabled our support organization, uh, mainly uh, the impact felt was more on the operational side than the, than the, download, the download aspect. So we ended up establishing a new delivery pipeline for our premium software. And the same pipeline is used today for initial downloads as well as ongoing updates and patches. So it starts with our R&D, building in-house a set of uh, you know, software images for daily and sprint activities. Um, and we use a combination of GitHub, Artifactory, Docker, and Jenkins as our main tooling for this work. We use also a dedicated DevOps pipelines to automate and publish our container images on Docker Hub um, when we get ready to release. 
So we release right now our cadence is every three months. So you can expect a bit more activity on Docker Hub towards end of cycle as we need to potentially create new, do new repositories uh, for our applications or maybe additional shared services. We also scan and sign those artifacts. So we work with our chief security office to improve um, our Docker images, our software images, um, based on the scan result. We sign those images using Docker Notary so that our customers are aware that those images are indeed coming from us and that they have not been tampered prior to any deployments in their data center. We push those assets into Docker Hub in many private repositories. So none of those item premium assets can be found in the public facing side of Docker Hub. You always have to authenticate. And finally, our customers and partners can access and download all the required images by accessing Docker Hub using their own Docker ID. We have automated and improved the streaming of those assets. So based on their existing software entitlements and chosen capabilities, our customers only download what matters to them. And that does reduce uh, pretty substantially the amount of images that needs to be pulled. Some of our largest applications require over 100 plus images to be downloaded. So we were not going to, we we're not going to let our customers visit Docker Hub and pick and choose images. No, that's, that's not how we're going, to, we're going to proceed. The download of those assets are, is fully scripted and can be executed either ahead of installation or during the installation process. Now, if you look at our customer base today, 75% of our deployments are happening on-premise with no access to the internet, so behind the firewall. Um, so we had to find a way to provide our customers a way to download those assets from an internet-friendly host and allow them to bring them back into their private data centers. So now that we're given the keys to Docker Hub, how were we going to use it efficiently for our use case? We had to build a little model around it. For that, we wanted to keep it simple, but certainly keeping it secure. Simple because we were able to, we had to go and explain it and roll it out very quickly as we we're going to go live. We wanted to minimize the account management overhead because we started with no automation in sight. We wanted to delegate the overall administration to other parties within the organization as quickly as possible. Uh, because at the end of the day, we don't want to be the gatekeeper of, uh, of Docker Hub from a software entitlement standpoint. Now, even though there were no automation in place at the beginning of that journey, we definitely intended to automate from the get-go. So we designed that model to ensure automation would be possible and to also allow for maximum portability in case we needed to switch technology. So the answer looks like this. We actually delivered on a very strong push-pull model. We allow each R&D organization to push within their own repositories because for them, there is no overlap of image ownership. However, I mentioned earlier, the platform delivers on a set of shared services and those services have to be distributed and accessible across the portfolio. So we have also our own dedicated platform R&D that needs to be able to push those images as well. This solution allows from a customer point of view to simply download what they need using their own Docker ID. So from a pool point of view, it's a very simplified model. The entire complexity of building and delivering those assets are not our customers' concerns. At the end of the day, our customers want a simple and reliable way to download what they are officially entitled to.
Overall, this push-pull model provides us uh, with three important benefits. The first one is a nice separation of roles and responsibilities on both pull and push per application ownership. It also provides a very nice uh, le uh, application level isolation within MacroFocus. And the model can be actually extended as new offerings come along. So we're currently set up with set with seven applications, but we're ready to onboard new applications when we see fit. We have a single point of management for customer's lifecycle so that we can onboard customers at any time and we can also terminate and revoke access to Docker Hub. I will now describe the underlying implementation um, that we put in place based on the uh, security model offered by Docker Hub. So it is based on organization, repositories, teams, and members. So you build your model in the context of a single organization. We actually use two mirrored organizations at MicroFocus, one to serve our sandboxing needs and one for our production needs. So first, we're going to create repositories for each of our applications with a special prefix. This helps us understand the overall ownership of those repos. Now we're going to do the same for the platform. Create additional repositories for our shared services. So now we need to define a set of teams to control those repositories. Now you'll find the predefined owners team. This is a team that has the most privileges on any repository you create. We're going to add few administrators to this team. And we're also going to assign a custom public distribution list for our release operations team, the one that will, unlink, that will handle customer entitlements once we're up and running. Next, we're going to create two teams per application, one for pull and one for push activities. Again, we're going to be using the same prefix to give us a hint of the ownership. And we will start adding some members as well. As you can see, we're promoting the use of a common distribution list instead of adding individual MicroFocus accounts. We use Outlook to actually manage the overall PDL distribution membership. So it's easier to handle the overall user management. We can add and remove MicroFocus employees out of the Outlook distribution list instead of doing it twice, maybe one on Outlook and one after the fact on Docker Hub. It also reduces noise when we review Docker Hub team membership through the Docker Hub portal. And in a way, it's very helpful if we need to reset the Docker Hub password for whatever reason, such as a security breach or simply force a refresh of our passwords on a regular basis. So one distribution list for each of our push-pull teams. Now let's do the same for the platform push-pull teams and associate members. So for this, only two teams are required, one pull and one push. Now let's move over to the repo access control. And we're going to assign teams to each repository with the right permissions. So we're going to give read-write access to all application push teams. And we're going to give read-only access to all application pull team. Clean and simple so far. We're going to repeat the same for the platform repositories. Read-write for the push team and read-only for the pull team. Now, finally, let's not forget that our applications do need access to the shared services to run properly. So what we do here is we actually add a read-only access to each of the application pool team. 
Okay, so now we are done setting our secured model. Now let's have a look at what it means when we bring customers in the, in the picture. The first thing we do is we tell our customers to actually register to Docker Hub. All right, they need to get their unique ID. And if they've been already using some of the Docker services, they can certainly reuse them. So they have to come and see us with their Docker ID. Once they provide us with it, we can do a quick lookup in our internal systems to check their current software entitlements so that we know which application they have access to, one or many. And for us, that translates very nicely into adding their Docker ID into the right application pool teams. And here you go, they're all set. And identically, if for example, they were on an evaluation period or customers run, runs out of support, for example, we can simply take the Docker ID out of the application pool team and suddenly they don't have access to the Docker images any longer. So in this journey, we were able to actually move the needle quite a bit with this new delivery and deployment model. We moved from a setup that had many different products, different sizes, different packaging, different installation software and methodologies, and different OS targets as well. And we moved to a container-only model for maximum portability and we provide a more consistent delivery and deployment experience to our customers. We now use Docker Hub as our main distribution service instead of using our homegrown custom websites. Um, and so we use Docker Hub for both initial downloads as well as ongoing updates and patches. We are no longer sending patches over emails with some additional instructions or documentation. Our customers don't have to visit additional support websites and find their way into uh, downloading some set of patches or files. What does our support matrix, matrix look like? Well, there are no more PDF files to read for sure. It's now all software defined. And what I mean by that, we are now actually carrying the overall application build of material digitally. And so we're able to bring the signature of that application from dev to QA to production into support as well. So we know at any time the composition of a specific release of an application. We were also able to also consolidate our licensing um, through the use of a shared licensing service. So a single license file can be redeemed per suite and deployed instead of actually downloading and deploying many license files, one per products or capabilities. So let's look how far we landed with Docker Hub after using this service for the past three plus years. We have two organizations on Docker Hub, one for Sandbox, and one for production. We use Sandbox for early evaluation of our beta programs. And we use our production organization for the official uh, delivery channel of our paid premium software. So we started from, from zero repositories, but now we have around 450 plus per organization. And this number continue to grow uh, as we release every three months, we continue to decompose our large monolith into smaller consumable services while introducing new capabilities. So the number of repositories uh, tend to increase as we, go, as we go along. We also keep an eye on the overall you know, image reuse through the portfolio. And we're right now about around 15%. Because again, we're trying to play a lot around with introducing a lot more shared technology and shared services. 
We have enabled over 1,600 plus customers, partners, and professional services on this new containerized stack, and we're just at the beginning of this journey. We keep the number of teams very small. As I mentioned earlier, we're only trying to create two new teams every time we bring a new offerings to market. So we try to keep things still very much tidy and clean so they can be managed uh, properly and efficiently. We have delegated the overall customer handling, customer management to three operations team worldwide, one per go-to-market region. And it's been ver working very well so far. So we're very happy uh, with the use of Docker Hub. Now there are always still ways to improve our, our existing implementation. For example, we would love to have a more granular permission model. Our release operations engineers uh, do have admin privileges within our Docker Hub space, and that we do find that a bit too dangerous at times. Um, we would love to bring a higher level of automation for repo management. Uh, when it comes to team membership and team assignment, we don't have yet the right APIs from Docker Hub. And so that does limit a bit uh, the amount of automation and visibility we want to put in place. Um, now, we would like to be able to have indeed a better visibility into the overall operations uh, happening within our Docker Hub ecosystem. And so for now, we also put a second journaling system in-house so that we can track all incoming requests coming from customers and partners. However, I would love to be able to leverage a set of API so that I can actually interrogate everything about my ecosystem within Docker Hub and try to bring back uh, a set of metrics on, on a regular basis, for example. Well, there are some very good news. We were quite excited to see uh, that Docker put their roadmap online for everyone to see. I think it happened a few weeks back. You can influence their product backlog and actually play an important role here uh, in the overall process. You can actually vote and add comments and it's available online. So everyone, uh, I encourage everyone to go look at this more carefully. It's under github.com slash docker slash roadmap. So I extracted a few enhancements that are very important to MicroFocus. The uh, user interface and the Docker Hub search um, have been improved and already released, so this is great news. Um, there's an audit system with APIs in uh, as work in progress with some ways to get notified when repositories are being managed. That's certainly something that we would uh, leverage. Uh, repository scanning, I mentioned we are using our own scanning tool, but it doesn't hurt to see what would uh, the scanner coming from Docker Hub would, would report on our uh, Docker images. We are looking at trying to facilitate uh, the integration between the macro focus customer accounts and the Docker world. And so, yeah, SAML or some other mean to be, uh, to provide um, uh, some way of connecting back to MacroFocus would be fantastic. Um, overall, I think the most pressing issue is to actually get access to those public APIs, those public REST APIs. That's certainly something that we will leverage extensively uh, within MacroFocus. Meanwhile, we could also make use of an activity dashboard, certainly, to surface out some important metrics for us. Overall, this is very positive. We are now able to track and review the plan and the overall execution of those features online. So thanks to Docker Hub for that. Now, finally, while we're waiting for those public APIs to come, so we have actually built a bit of um, automation scripting in-house. And we would like uh, to be able to contribute back to the community um, and uh, make that available open source. 
So we could not publish our code on time for DockerCon, but if you're interested, uh, you can visit our landing page at macrofocus.github.io at later time, or you can simply ping me and I'll try to, to publish this as, as soon as I get approval. So this wraps up my talk. Thanks again for watching. I will now be answering your questions in the live Q&A. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.